lots of sun, wide open spaces, and a low slope. No, I'm not talking about a plot of prime farmland. I'm actually describing the perfect place to plant solar PV on commercial metal roofing, namely standing seam panels, where you can easily harvest some serious benefits from the sun's rays by using your roof's ribs as rails. Say that three times fast. Today, Mark and Sean are gonna show off how easily a large PV array with hundreds of kilowatts can be added to a low slope commercial building with the direct attach method using S5 PV kit and clamps. If you've been looking for a mounting method that offers a strong attachment without adding a bunch of extra weight to your roof, you're not gonna to wanna to miss this one. Over to you, Mark. Thanks, Patrick. Um, and welcome, everybody. Um, welcome to our discussion today about the 200 kilowatt solar system we put up on our manufacturing plant expansion last summer, summer of 21. Um, I'm uh, Mark Guys. I'm director of our uh, solar business at S5. I've been at S5 now two and a half years, um, but I've been in solar for a more than a dozen years now, uh, and most of that has been in that in the wrapping space. I've always been involved with mounting systems and um, you know putting things on roofs. Um, and then with me is Sean Haddock, um, and I'll let you introduce yourself, Sean. Hi, all. Thanks for joining us again. I'm sure you've seen a lot of me. If not, I am Sean Haddock with S5. I've uh, been here for about 20 years. I've evolved into a position of basically I go out, <clears throat> work in the field with contractors, director of field training and product support. So any kind of training or learning or, or any of that kind of stuff with our products, I'm your guy. Okay, thanks, Sean. Thanks for joining us. So here's our manufacturing plant. This is in Iowa Park, Texas. It was first, first started um, manufacturing it in 2012. And then just this past year, we put a 20,000 square foot expansion on it. And now we, then we installed solar to complement the already 70 kilowatts that we had on the original plant. So this is the new um, expansion of our plant. And what it shows is, so the 200 kilowatts includes not only half that roof, the southern half, it includes the awnings as well. But we're gonna to talk today about the top of the roof. Let's dive into the products we're using. So a key thing is that, of course, we installed this on a metal roof using our, pro our own products, S5's products. The two key products are the PV kit, which is our railless direct attach mounting system, and uh, S5T. What we're all about at S5 is that we design clamps that are very specific for individual roof profiles. And, um, and the purpose of that is we feel that's the best way to give you the best best value for your money um, and the best performance. So our PV kit is a direct attached system and the purpose of that is, you know, metal roofs have rails. So why do you need to put rails on top of rails? So when you're using a direct attached rail system like our PV kit, it's less time on the roof and there's less material, less cost. You're not hauling rails up on the roof. You can, everything can go up in a bucket basically for a system this big. Another advantage that really saves time is that with rails, you, you spend a lot of time measuring and laying out rails, setting strings for every layer of rails you have. With this, most of it goes on the fly. So you really use the module as a jig and you install the clamps on the fly as you build. It saves a lot of time. Speaking of clamps, we needed the S5 T-clamp for this roof profile. The T-clamp, as you see there, is a two-piece clamp. The reason for that, with a T-shape, you really have to roll that clamp over the seam and then you slide the insert in place underneath it. From there, you tighten it down with the set screws. I want to point out that we now have Torx tip set screws. They're a round point, so they dimple the panel as opposed to uh, doing any kind of damage to the panel. It's, it's a polished point basically creates a dimple into the backside of that clamp giving you a mechanical interlock. As I mentioned it's a Torx now and we used to use Allen and the reason for the Torx is you can tighten it down better and not have that tip stick in the Allen. A lot of you that have installed our products in the past have experienced trying to pull that screw gun out because the, the tip got stuck. Well with that Torx tip that doesn't happen anymore. The top of the PV kit also has a Torx so one tip, one fastener, um, all works great together. When Sean said using that set screw, the round point, and, and torquing that into the metal is that it actually creates a, creates dimples, as you saw. And the importance of that is that creates a mechanical interlock. 
So the resistance to uplift and sliding is not a friction fit as you would think. It's actually a mechanical interlock from those dimples interlocking with the set screw. And so it's a much more resistant to uplift and, and sliding than it would be if it was friction. We are in no way doing any damage to the panel. We're not violating any warranties. We're leaving all warranties intact with a penetration free attachment. All right, so let's now let's dive into the tools you need. There's actually very few tools you need. So the key tool is a, is a screw gun or an impact wrench and at the Torx tip, and th those come with, with the product. So every box of our parts has a T30 Torx tip in it. Um, and then you need to have a torque wrench to calibrate it and to really make sure that you are applying the proper torque on it to, to do that dimpling that we mentioned. Um, so you, can, you may test some out and, you know, periodically at the beginning and then make sure that you just, over the course of, of installing, you, your guns are have an adequate charge and will apply that torque consistently. Other than that, really the important thing is a string. As we see, the string is only, can only, only needs to be used for that first row of clamps. Sean, what else, what other um, tools are good to have up on the roof? Pretty much your common stuff, a tape measure, a marker, as we'll get into here, it is 100% critical that your bottom row or your top row, wherever you're starting from, is absolutely straight. That sets up your whole array from that point forward. We'll get more into that for sure. You know, one thing that I learned from, I didn't know, not know until I started working here is um, do not use a, a, a lead pencil, carpenter's pencil up on a metal roof, right, John? Primarily on a painted panel, it doesn't matter as much, but if you use a lead pencil on Galvalume, um, what happens is, is there's a, there's a reaction basically chemically, metallurgically, that that will be in legible rust uh, in the very near future if you use a lead pencil. Yeah, so that's a new thing. That's honestly a new thing. I didn't really realize that. So it, for a metal roof, you should always use a Sharpie or something else. Do not use a, a normal graphite pencil. While we're on that subject, even a chalk line can be detrimental to a metal roof. If you snap a line on those seams and, and don't wipe away all of the chalk afterwards, um, you get a little bit of moisture, a little bit of dew, and pretty soon it becomes like a permanent marker on that roof. All right, so let's get back to Texas um, and let's introduce the team. So we, we contracted out the installation to a company called Spear Innovation. Um, they're actually a, local, they're a Texas company, Texas-based, local. Um, and, you know, we really got a lot of benefit out of that because they really know the incentives, uh, a lot of the paperwork with the, uh, for the interconnection with the utility. And that took a lot of pressure off of us to kind of know that and do all that paperwork and footwork. From that perspective, it was good to go with a company that really does it all and knows knows the area. Originally, at the beginning, they spent a lot of time, you know, on the ground before we jumped up. You know, they were planning it out, which is very important. We'll get into that. They mapped out the arrays, you know, kind of documented what, what modules were going where. And then a very important piece of this was they prepped the modules on the ground before bringing them up. That's a key part of the installation is, is all the prep work you can do when you're on the ground. I mean, you saw there they were they were laying out where all the modules are going. They're they're identifying them on a module map as they go through. They're they're getting all their wires ready and and clipped up on the modules so that when they go up there, it's more of a lay and play. I do want to point out on here that we had dual optimizers on this project, which which makes it even more critical that you have everything laid out properly. You know where your leads are going. If you've got to have lead extensions, things like that. Um, Everything you could do on the ground to prepare will make it go so much faster when you get up on the roof. Right. Yeah, so dual optimizers are, there's two modules plugged into one optimizer, and then that optimizer is strung together with other optimizers to your home run, to your inverter. So what that makes, is it makes it a little more complicated because you don't prep every module the same way. Only every other module actually has the optimizer. So you have to do some clipping and wiring up on the roof. But the more you minimize, as Sean said, the better off you are. So in our case, it was, this was in summer in Texas. So it was over 100 degrees up there. So we definitely appreciated um, being, you know, down in the down in the shade on the ground instead of being up on that hot roof. Absolutely, it was a hot one. You want to thread the set screw into the clamp. You can get your PV kits threaded onto the clamp. Have everything done properly on the ground, and then you know you carry them up in bulk in buckets or whatever it is, but 
the more of that you can do on the ground in the shade or if it's if it's raining outside you know any kind of prep work like that is very beneficial once you get up on that roof now as you dive into the project you're up on the roof it's really really important to then get a good start and take that extra effort to square everything up that's really the only time you need to be precise that's the only time that you'll need to snap a line and measure and get everything straightened out but that sets you up for everything all the rest of the clamps go on the fly and the module becomes the jig you know one thing about metal roofs sean is that they're not always square with it themselves right the eaves and ridges can be different not square with the standing seams themselves right that's correct and that's where depending on the project whether you got a, a flatter roof or whether you've got one that is more public facing where you can see it you really want to you want to study the roof and pick whether you're going to go square with the eave line with the ridge line or whether you're going to go square with the panel seams i like to start with the first column but other guys will you know they'll work continuously on several columns but ultimately getting it square the way you want it to where it's going to look the best is the most crucial what we see is common is to is to do that first row and then do one column so you kind of create a an l shape and that l shape you can spend the time to get that really straight and then from then in filling in the middle is really a piece of cake as you see here they did not pre-install the edge grab on the bottom row of clamps that is something that's optional it kind of keeps the the disc out of the way of your string lines so that you you have a clear working space from this point forward you really want everything pre-assembled because it's lay and play the module becomes your jig and you work up in your rows or your columns tighten things down as you go but you want everything really pre-assembled so that so another big part of of this process is staging and material flow you got to get up you got to get all those modules up on the roof you got to get them in a place where you know you they can be easily moved and installed in place on this project we were really we were staging everything on the ground we were getting all the modules ready on the ground so we were bringing them up kind of a couple at a time and putting them in place on on other projects depending on the project and depending on what all you're doing the staging can be a critical thing in that one you want to make sure you don't overload the roof and spread out your your loads as well as keeping them out of your way because i have seen where you know you have a flat roof and you have an area to bring your modules up and they'll go ahead and stage them up there on the roof as opposed to on the ground like we did on this project there's all kinds of different ways to do it and different ways to stage it it's something you've just got to pre-plan for and sometimes you've even got to plan it on site and figure out what's going to work the best unfortunately that's going to be all for today but as you may have guessed we're just getting started Come back next time for part two when we get down to the lightning quick business of installing our PV panels. Don't blink or you might miss it. Hit subscribe and click the bell to catch our next video as soon as we post it. Thanks for watching.